The ID Cooling SC226 XT Black is an air CPU cooler that aims to offer a good balance between low cost and good cooling performance. It has a single 120mm fan included with the option of adding a second fan for a push-pull configuration. The cooler looks great and sounds almost too good to be true, with an advertised TDP potential of cooling of no less than 250 watts, and we will put that claim to the test in this review. The ID Cooling SC226 XT Black is the all-black variant of the SC226 XT. I say variant because this cooler also has an addressable RGB variant as well as an all-white and all-white plus RGB variants as well. In this review, we have the low stream level of this CPU cooler with no addressable RGB LEDs to drive up the price and no bespoke white paint to match your red and black gaming system. From a design perspective, this is a good looking CPU cooler. It has no less than 6 heat pipes and aluminum made cooling fins to dissipate the heat of the CPU. The top of the heatsink is covered by a metal made decorative plate and the heat pipe ends are covered by metal made caps. In addition to these features, this CPU cooler has an offset design to push the entire heatsink and the fan assembly away from the RAM slots of the motherboard, thus increasing the RAM clearances and compatibility. The CPU cooler is using a single 120mm fan that has a maximum speed of 1800 rpm and of course, it matches the all black design of the heatsink. When we talk about the pricing, this CPU cooler can be had for no less than 50 US dollars at least at the time of this review, which is not a bad price to say the least, especially for what you get in terms of features and design. The heatsink of the AC226 XT Black uses no less than 41 aluminum made cooling fins all painted the same black as the heat pipes and the top cover plate of the heatsink. The sides of the cooling fins have the usual design that allows the fan clips to attach themselves to the heatsink. The zigzag pattern of the cooling fins present on both the front and the back sides of the heatsink is made to disrupt the airflow when entering the heatsink. At the rear of the cooler, we have some fins that are shorter in length. This is done to increase the clearances around the CPU socket area and prevent the CPU cooler from touching the VRM heatsinks of the motherboard or the RAM modules if you have a dual style motherboard design that has RAM modules on both sides of the CPU socket. The cooler uses 6 copper made heat pipes to move the heat away from the CPU towards the cooling fins. These heat pipes have an outer diameter of 6mm and are arranged in the standard U shape to better move the heat around the heatsink and to increase the structural rigidity of the heatsink. The base plate is made from a solid piece of nickel plated copper and has a smooth finish with a subtle radial pattern etched into the surface. This type of radial pattern does not affect the evenness of the spread of the thermal compound and instead adds more depth in terms of the design. The heat pipes of the cooler are making contact with the base plate at the back of the core plate. This type of design is ideal for heat transfer and does not affect the surface of the base plate so it's a win-win either way. The ID Cooling AC226 XT Black uses a single 9 blade 120mm fan that has the same all black theme as the rest of the CPU cooler. This fan has the usual features we are used to see on a regular basis, if not on good performing fans. Rubber pads on the corners of the fan frame to dampen the vibrations and to prevent the scratches of the heatsink. This fan has a minimum speed of 700 rpm and a maximum speed of 1800 rpm, give or take. For power, this fan has a single cable that is unfortunately not protected by any sleeving, but it has black wires which is nice, as it will blend with the rest of the system. Fortunately, the cable ends with a 4-pin Molex connector which means that you can control the speed of the fan throughout your entire motherboard. In terms of the accessories, you get enough to get you going and that's about it. You have a user manual, a backplate for Intel sockets, two pairs of metal made fan clips which will allow you to install two fans on the heatsink, a tube of thermal compound, a case badge, two sets of mounting bars for Intel and AMD and the installation hardware which includes screws, spacers, bolts, double threaded nuts and plastic spacers. The installation is pretty straightforward. You have the backplate and adjust the position of the studs that are pre-installed on it. Once that is done, you install the backplate at the back of the CPU socket on the motherboard. Afterwards, you install the required spacer on the CPU socket side of the studs and then secure the mounting bars in place. Noting the orientation of these bars is important as they can go both ways but only one way is correct, so check the user manual. You secure the mounting bars with the provided nuts and then you apply the thermal compound. Finally, you install the heatsink over the mounting bars and tighten the spring loaded screws. You will need a long Phillips screwdriver to do this job easily as you need a long enough screwdriver to go through the entire heatsink through a small hole that passes through the fins. 
Finally, you install the fan on the front of the heatsink and connect it to a fan header and that is it for the entire installation process. And here is how the ID Cooling AC226 XT looks like inside my testing system. The all black theme of the cooler fits nicely with the rest of the system, especially with the motherboard. In terms of the clearance, for the RAM slots you are golden, as the fan of the CPU cooler does not even reach the RAM slots of the motherboard, let alone interfere with the RAM modules. In terms of the graphics card clearance, you have 33mm of space between the sides of the heatsink and the graphics card, which is enough space for airflow to pass through but not enough space to allow easy access access to the top M.2 socket of the motherboard. Before we get into the thermal performance and testing of the CPU cooler, you will hear a noise sample of this CPU cooler with the fan going from either a dead stop or from its minimum RPM all the way through to the maximum RPM. I am doing this because while a decibel value is useful for the comparison of the CPU cooler with others, it does not highlight unwanted noises such as vibrations, bearing ticking from the fan or from the heatsink itself. The ID Cooling AC226 XT Black uses a single 120mm fan that spins at a maximum of 1800 RPM and with this setup, the CPU cooler has a maximum noise output of 4.3 dB with the measuring device placed at a distance of 10cm away from the CPU cooler. The testing system used in this review has as its centerpiece the Intel i7 14700K CPU running at the factory turbo boost frequency. The ambient temperature is set at a fixed 26 degrees Celsius or 78.8 Fahrenheit. And with the CPU running at its maximum frequency and 250 watts worth of TDP, it reached a maximum temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. A temperature that is not surprising to say the least, as this CPU is power hungry and you usually either need a liquid CPU cooler or a massive air CPU cooler to keep the temperatures under 90 degrees. While it is not on the top of the chart, this CPU cooler does perform well given the CPU we've been using to test it. And remember, the CPU did not hit the thermal throttling point, a thing which not a lot of air CPU coolers can do. With this performance level offered for such a low price tag, this CPU cooler is a good deal for your gaming system. I would not use this CPU cooler with a high TDP CPU such as the Intel i7 14700K because you will keep the CPU too close to its thermal throttling point. But for a gaming system, this CPU cooler is a great choice not only because it cools your CPU rather well but because it's easy to install, well made and looks great. And if you can find it for a decent price tag, then I highly recommend it to you. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and Star pages of this channel.